Outstanding. Ian, it's all yours. All right, thanks. Just getting the screen shared. Okay, cool. So, hey again, folks, I'm gonna give just a little presentation about some insight in how we uh, we debug Pulp on Catello using Pulp CLI. I realized as I was writing this presentation that I would kind of call us, I don't know, medium level power users of Pulp CLI. A lot of times when we're debugging, it's it's looking it looks something like pulp show dash dash href copy this from our database and take a peek. But there are times when we do things more complicated, and I'll dig into a bit of that, or at least from my perspective. Um, I would be curious if after hearing this, any of you Catello folks have any other input on how to use pulp CLI. But let me just jump on in. So our configuration that we like to use. Um, now, by default, it comes with just a single, uh, a single pulp set up on satellite or Catello, um, which just points to the the pulp that's just on your server, because there's there's no knowledge of smart proxies at that point. But what's really handy is if we start setting up different profiles on the pulp CLI for different smart proxies, because suddenly you don't need to think, oh. OK, how do I talk to this smart proxy? If you've never done it before, you might not know that the certificates on your Catello are the ones you also use to talk to the pulp on the smart proxy. Um, so with this config, uh, you're able to just do a pulp dash dash profile like, like Samir showed in his last presentation. And then you can start talking to your smart proxy, which is um, one really powerful thing that pulp CLI enables for us. And well, Samir already told us what a smart proxy is. Um, but just as a reminder, it's just a remote entity that also happens to have a pulp floating around in it for having your content be hosted somewhere else geographically. And I also just wanted to show this old graphic because people yell at me when I use it since it's like, I don't know, 15 years old at this point. Anyway, going onwards. Uh, so yeah, profiles are awesome. Um, I talked about this a bit. so. For example, if you just need to check, use Pulp CLI to check if a repo has the right repo version. This was more of an issue when we were first integrating um, with Pulp. So when the Pulp CLI first showed up, it was really handy to be able to check things like this. Um, so we'll just do like a Pulp dash dash profile proxy RPM repo list. Um, and then you just view the repos, or the same for um, the main server. And then what we can compare that against is on the bottom here, we have some Rails console stuff. So we have a so you can load up the Catello repository object, and then let's say if we're searching for any Alma repo, you can pluck out the version href that we store, and we can compare that against what's in Pulp. And sometimes, if there's a bug, you might be a version behind, and that might explain why you're not seeing the content that you're seeing, um, which is very helpful, um, especially for support folks. Oh, and I will say about that, this has also made it very easy to, to help debug upstream users as well. Because anyone who's having a problem, sometimes it's hard to tell them to curl different things. But if you just tell them to run a pulp command, um, it's easier. And they'll probably <laughs> respond to you more quickly. So here's another fun example of some things of our debugging. Um, so this kind of shows the searching capabilities of pulp CLI that we leverage. Um, for example, find a pulp repo version from a smart proxy repo URL, so or path, I should say. And let's say you know where your content is hosted on some smart proxy, um, but you don't know, but you want to dig more into that repo. You don't know where that repo is listed. So what you can do is you can list the distributions on the proxy, the smart proxy, and you can have a nice base path search here. And then that will uh, load up the distributions. And then you can find the publication from there. Um, and then all you need to do is, yeah, look at the publication. And then that will show you the repository version. 
because we don't store repo versions for smart proxies in Catello. We store a whole lot of things in our database, but that's one thing that we don't store since we don't really have a need for it. Um, and that can be very handy uh, for, again, the same issue before. A user might be wondering, why is their content not showing up exactly how they want? And perhaps we didn't optimize sync when it should have been a complete sync. So that would have the version be the old one. Another interesting area for our debugging is for tracking pulp tasks. Now, we use something called Dynflow to track our tasks. Um, because Foreman, Catello, we have our own tasks that spawn, that can spawn pulp tasks. And we use this 99% of the time for task debugging because um, it shows info right from pulp. Um, so an example here, let's say you publish a content view with filtering, which tells pulp to copy content. This is starting to get into a complicated situation. Um, and we just want to check the version's content. Maybe indexing is not working, and we're trying to figure out why. So in, in pulp terms, really, what we're saying is tell pulp to copy some repository, com repository contents from one to the next. And let's see what advisories are in that repo, for example. So in the Catella world, it'll look something like this. You'll load up the Dynflow console. There's expandable sections. This is one. Uh, copy content is the task that we use that tells pulp directly to copy content. And we have some filters. So this is all Foreman data right now. But now here's the pulp data. And this is what pops up in our UI. So you can see that a repository version was created under the created resources. And we can view it right here. So um, this is kind of a case where, well, we don't need the pulp CLI because we can check in here. But conversely, when we're doing ACS debugging, we had an issue where we didn't drill into uh, task groups. So we did need the pulp CLI there to look at, to look into the task groups to see what failed. We've since fixed that, but that was a very useful part, uh, a, a great way to use pulp CLI when um, developing ACSs. But now what we don't have from Dynflow is to actually check the content. So we'll grab the href that we saw in Dynflow for the created version. And what we like to do is we really like looking at the, um, the query hrefs that are given um, uh, on the repo versions. So it'll tell you how to query for all of the advisories in that single version. And it's nice because it's just a copy and paste. And then you can search and see whatever uh, advisories um, are actually there, which is very helpful if you're debugging an issue when um, perhaps you're errata aren't looking exactly like you hope that they look. So for feature development, I talked a little bit about this with ACS. Um, it was really helpful just being able to use the pulp CLI first to learn how ACSs even work. We could use the CLI to create the ACSs in their remotes, and then we can refresh them. Um, it, it's a lot better than just going to the curling commands, because it can be a bit cumbersome at times, especially if you need to do posts. Um, this makes it way easier to handle that. And let's see. Yeah, so one thing that was very helpful was sometimes um, in our tests, we have setups where we run against a live pulp and we record the API data for use later. Um, and we would have issues where Maybe one of our tests would fail, and the, the part that's supposed to delete your remote out of pulp fails. And when you're running a test, the error reporting isn't great just how it just because of how it is. Um, so the pulp CLI was very necessary because I would be listing the remotes in my proxy, or I'd be listing the remotes on the main server. Um, or I should say just the main server. We don't run against the proxy. But we would list the remotes, the ACS is there, and see if there are extra ones. And then you could delete them. Um, seems like a simple thing, but the, the CLI really shaves time off these tasks that are otherwise pretty tedious. Um, oh, yeah, and that's exactly what the second bullet point is when there are cascading errors. So you don't really see the original error, which is, you know, I can't make a remote because there already is a remote. Um, and that just gets hidden sometimes in our tests. So that's what I was talking about before. 
And then I just have a fun recent debugging example. Um, again, this one doesn't really seem to show like the power of Pulp CLI, but it was used and it, it was a pretty interesting debugging example in Catello. So we had an issue before um, where a repo, a, a container repo in Catello wasn't syncing. Um, and some of you might have heard this story before. We had a, a team meetup where I talked about this. But the for some reason, um, in one of our uh, entities that we use for container content, which is called a Docker meta tag, it wasn't getting indexed properly. And that kind of the Docker meta tag ties Docker tags together. It has to do with the, the schema one and the schema two versions. Um, <laughs> makes it complicated. But we were having some error. So I was trying to dig into it. And eventually, I found out that our index Docker manifest didn't have a backend pulp content unit. So, so that means it it failed to index, which was very strange because the con the manifest uh, API is very easy to use. Um, so what I did is I went I went down the chain of uh, method calls until we got to the API. And of course, when I called the API. Um, the manifest that I was looking for, it did come up. It existed. And I was like, all right, great. So we're, we're causing this somehow, Catello is. So I went up one method to content unit list, and I called that, and the results were empty. So we were doing some kind of filtering that made the correct manifest not get returned. Um, so let's see. Oh, and I can just show here. So what I did just to check like what the heck kind of content is in here. Uh, I used the pulp CLI to just check the actual manifest content. And we had our href for the query there, like I alluded to a while ago. And then I used that query to take a look at the manifest. And this seemed funky because the media type here was pretty JWS. And that was uh, something we're not really used to seeing. The light bulb didn't come off immediately for me when I was debugging this, but it did when I looked into our code for how we, we filter the manifests, and I realized that we filter only JSON types. So Catella was filtering out that pretty AWS, or sorry, pretty JWS type. And eventually, we chatted with the pulp folks, um, chatted with Ina, and we found out that that type wasn't supposed to be in the database anyway. Um, so we did some debugging, helped find a pulp bug. We got it fixed, and all was happy. Um, so I just thought that was a fun story. Um, so just some wishes here for pulp CLI. Um, viewing associations would be kind of nice. Um, the connections between publications and distributions, we do have some of that. Um, but for example, if you could even list it from a repository, or repository version, um, that would be kind of neat. Uh, more searching capabilities would be cool. Um, so for example, in uh, in our Hammer CLI for Foreman, you can do a search for anything that looks like Alma. Um, so having that capability in the Pulp CLI could help us find things quicker, maybe, um, especially for things that we don't index ourselves. <laughs> and then lastly, Samir brought this up. So we do a lot of pulp show dash dash hrefs. Um, it would be interesting if we could just do a pulp show href. I mean, ultimate laziness, but you know, sometimes we wonder why the dash dash href has to be there. Maybe there's a good reason. I'm not sure. But anyway, that was my presentation. Thanks a bunch. Let me know if there are any questions. It was a great presentation, Ian. Yeah. Thank um, you, Ian. I want to uh, mention that CLI is under very active development. Our current release is 0 0.15. Um, we really need to get a 0 0.16 out because there have been a lot of additions. And some of them may actually answer some of your wish requests. Like the, the CLI can give you whatever REST gives you. But for example, uh, RPM list includes um, uh, name I contains, meaning the name contains a value, which is the search that you're looking for. Um, and we've had, we've been trying to complete the CLI's exposure of all the stuff the rest gives you. So some of this is on the way. 
by all means, look at what's been done recently and open RFEs for stuff that you're missing. Uh, That's exciting. See. Vladimir, you raised your hand. Yeah, hi. I just wanted to ask about the, about the profiles. Uh, so it's if I get it correctly, it does uh, on the fly that right, re redirects uh, to the smart proxy instead of the pulp on the master server. That's right. right. And yeah, how each... can I... okay. I'm sorry. Can you repeat your question? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, thank you. And uh, how can I, or how do I define or pair this uh, name of the profile with the actual URL of the smart proxy? That's one of the settings. I think it is API host um, is one of the settings in that profile. Um, let me, It's this is shown in the documentation for Pulp CLI, and I'm going to provide a link here that shows this. Okay. Go ahead, Dennis. Mm -hmm. I think we're on the same path, but maybe you have a better link than I do. Yeah, and um, you use the word redirect, but um, the CLI has a direct connection with any any of the smart proxies. In this case, the smart proxy is just a pulp server, just like any other pulp server. And so what the CLI is doing here is is able to basically be configured with you know uh, multiple pulp servers. Yeah, that um, link from Grant is what I was about to paste also. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I got ahead of you. And faster. Oh, I'll just, yeah, okay. and, okay, thank you. oh sorry. Um, I'll just put in real quick and just say for setting up the Pulp CLI, um, it, on a, a Catello or a satellite instance, you just need to copy and paste the config um, because it has all the cert set up and just rename it and re rewrite the URL, which makes it super easy. Yeah, okay. I think that's really convenient, Ian, that you can talk to all your pulp servers using the same credentials. Sure is. Cool, cool. Thank you, guys. I see uh, Shadamram. Did I pronounce that correctly? Hi. You got your hand up? Go yeah. Ahead. Yeah. Hi. Um, thanks. Um, so trying to understand the task group, right? So what is the purpose of the task groups? I, sorry if it has already been discussed. I just joined. Um, how, how do I group the task and what is the purpose? What, what gives me? Yeah, so uh, you as a user don't really have control over creating task groups. Uh, certain operations in Pulp uh, require uh, multiple tasks to be run. And in order to monitor those operations, we added this concept of task groups. Uh, one place where you may notice task groups used is for the import export uh, workflows. I believe we uh, start up uh, a task for each repository that needs to be exported and you will then see a task group created with lots of tasks in it. And you would monitor the task group to see the progress for the whole operation of import or export. Um, I, I forget where else we use task groups. Um, I believe we used them for the migration from Pulp 2 to 3 initially. OK. And how about the, uh, in the Pulp CLI, we enhance giving the names. So I, I remember uh, we are giving the hreference, and much of the things is work with hreferences, and is easily. Uh, and it is a bit of tedious to go and look for that, um, go to the tasks and get all the re what is a remote, and what is a um, repository, and what is that. Uh, worker node, all of them. Then we'll go and find out what is that repo name for uh, that H reference UID kind of stuff. So, is there a, any uh, easy mechanism where uh, any substitute where I can run that command and it gives the name of the H reference instead of just giving H references? My pulp's name. Right now, there's not. Um, and you're t are you talking about specifically for pulp CLI? Yeah, pulp CLI. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There is not a feature like that, but I think it would be a great feature. <laughs> Can you restate the feature? I, I didn't actually quite understand it. But it's oh, the, the feature that he described, as I understand it, and please correct me if I misunderstood you, um, is that have, um, for example, a task status um, return 
created resources or um, yeah create resources tab workers resources. and remotes and rpm repositories all those things it is giving us a hedge reference and when we are dealing with multiple repositories so it is uh, very difficult to know that right it's uh, right instead of that if they if we give the name uh, to be displayed some of the task to be in a uh, human described manner right not just by hedge reference if task list can give an yeah, option to Human but reference. Not all the objects in pulp have name. For example, publication doesn't have any name. Yeah, bad of it. Possible. Yeah, understood. Okay. But and, also... and I think we have a unified uh, task report format, so that's why we return the href in the format we do, which is not very yeah. much readable. But that's yes. basic but for consistency. From the perspective of a CLI user. Um, it would be nice if you could tell it, hey, can you show me this in a human readable format um, so that it would do the lookup for you. The CLI would do the lookup for you and show you a name. And I feel like for the CLI, this would be a great feature. And if you could file uh, that RFE on GitHub for the Pulp CLI project, uh, that would be great. Sure, will do. Thanks. And if, if you'll note, Matthias just put a link in the chat, uh, which oh. specifically is to an issue that we that was opened in February of last year. List objects by their associations and or see deeper associations. Um, so feel free, please do add to this the issue that's linked here. And if this issue isn't exactly what you're asking for, let's get a new one open, but let's keep them linked because I think this is the this is stuff that that uh, people need. Um, I will say that the first the first goal of the CLI is to give you access from the command line in a more convenient way to what the REST API gives you. What we're asking now is have the CLI operating at a at a higher level, at like a wizard level, and absolutely is a good idea. And that's like the next stage of evolution, if you will, the CLI is have it get closer to the human and further away from pulp. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, man. Great ideas though. Great ideas. Please, uh, please open issues and be active and, and poke us if we're not moving fast enough for you. All right, Ian, are you're done with your presentation, correct? Yes, I am. All right. So this kind of got off a little bit on the more general CLI, but I think we can stop recording, Daniel, if you will. And what we have now is uh, 